everyone, this is Cheryl from The Sewing Basket in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Today is Monday, April 20th, and we are here for our Daily Dose. Uh, today we decided to talk about a few of the different sprays that we have available and what they're used for and some of the neat things that they do. So the first one I'm going to talk about, it's something new here. It's a product called Grippy. And what it does is it's going to spray a really thin coat of almost, uh, it's not tacky, it's not sticky, but it gives a coating to the back of your ruler so that they grip onto your fabric. So when you're cutting, they aren't going to slide around. So I have two of the same rulers here. This one has not been sprayed. This one I did spray. So when I set this one down, and if I'm going to be cutting with a rotary cutter, it can twist real easily. Once I spray the grippy on there, it gets a little bit cloudy, and I put it down, and when there's no pressure on it, I can still move it around, and as soon as I put pressure on it, it's going to grip the fabric. So when I'm cutting with that rotary cutter, that, that top edge of my ruler is not going to keep pushing away from me. So it's a, it's a new product, and it works really well, especially on some of the older rulers that you have that didn't have any sort of a... Of a grip strip on it. Um, it also works really well on the specialty rulers that have weird angles or things that you're trying to cut around a shape. Say you, you're doing a grandmother's flower garden or something like that where you have a specific shape that you need to try to cut all the way around. It just really holds nicely onto your fabric. I also like to use it for little rulers because it seems like the littler they are you don't have as much area to keep your fingers away from the cutter so they tend to slip a little bit. So again, I'm going to show you on here how to spray it. Typically, I would always use a spray box or go outside. There is a little bit of an odor, so anybody who has any sort of COPD or breathing issues, you need to be aware of where is the best place for you to do that. Um, there also is a little bit of overspray, so either I would cover my surface completely or use a spray box of some sort. Um, just so you guys can see a little better, I'm just going to do it here. So this one, you're going to hold it 8 to 10 inches above, and you don't really need to do a lot. You're just going to do a real light coat across it. And you're going to give it about 30 seconds or so just to dry. You really don't see it. It just makes the ruler slightly cloudy, but it really doesn't um, impede any of the lines that you're trying to see when you're cutting. And again, once it's dry, I put it down now, and it's just going to grip the fabric. The other place that I tried using it is with the um, So Steady and the Wesley rulers that go with the ruler foot. They typically come with these little grip strips to put on it, but sometimes they can get in the way of the lines that you're trying to use when you're, when you're quilting with them. So I've sprayed the back of this one. Again, it's a little bit cloudy. But when I put it down and apply pressure, it's not going to slip around as much. So if I'm trying to quilt around that ruler foot, it's just going to give me a better grip on my fabric. So that was the Grippy, a new product for us. Um, we're not sure. We're still checking with the post office. We don't know if we're going to be able to mail these. We think if we post ground on it, we should be able to. So for right now, they're not going to be on our website. They're for pickup orders only. Um, but if you go to our website and it's on there, that means we've been approved to ship them. So the second one I'm going to talk about is probably our most common one here at the shop. It's the 505 Basting Spray. And mostly what this is used for is holding all your layers together before you're getting ready to quilt a quilt top. So typically in the past, you know, traditionally they would hand baste the layers together with long strings that they would quilt around and then clip out. Um, then they went to doing the curved safety pins, which a lot of people still have. Nice thing about safety pins is you buy them once, you have them forever. Um, but you do have to put a lot of pins in. The you know, rule of thumb is you need a pin as spaced out about about as far as a fist so about every four to five inches so the bigger the quilt obviously the more pins you're going to need and it also can give it a little bit more shift to your quilt even though you pin it and you pin it and you pin it 
when you're when you're putting those pins through there it's hard to tell what's happening to the back of your quilt um, so when we use the spray base we look, and I, I've made up this little kind of miniature quilt here so I have my top laid out I have my backing okay and I would put my top down and I'm just gonna lift it up about halfway and then this one says to spray from about 12 inches away and again there's going to be a little bit of over mist so i would definitely have a protected area do not spray it on your floor on your carpet because you can't get it off the carpet if your overspray um, gets on there we did have a customer that had an issue with that so i just tend to focus mostly on the outside edge i try not to spray too much beyond the edge of my quilt top i don't want this to be real sticky so I'll tend to go and then just a couple zigzags in the middle. And it's kind of like doing the old fashioned um, wallpaper where you kind of hold it up and you work it down. Okay, if you have a large quilt, you need, might need to have two people. If you get a wrinkle, you can pick it back up and then stick it back down. And then I'm just going to do the other half. So I'm going to flip it up. I'm going to spray. And then I'm going to smooth it down. I tend to do the top first because that's where when I'm quilting I'm going to be able to look at this so if it shifts I can keep moving it. So then I'm going to flip it over and again on this one I already had my back on here because it was little otherwise I'd be taking my back laying it out on on the back side of my batting and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to fold it back halfway. I'm going to spray smooth it down and then do the other side so now you have both of your fabrics sandwiched on either side of your batting if I have a larger quilt I still might put a few safety pins in especially in my corners or around my edges just so that as I'm quilting that doesn't accidentally flip up and get caught underneath uh, my quilting because we've all done that where you look at the back and now you got to rip out a bunch because your corner got quilted upside down <laughs> So, so that's the 505 spray and it's just going to hold it together nicely for your quilting. One other tip, when you're doing that, if you use a ruler to smooth out, mm -hmm. works great too. All right. And then the last one we have to talk about today is called the 606 spray. So the difference between 505 and 606 usually um this is a whole series there's actually 202 404 505 606 and the bigger the number kind of the the stickier it is okay so this one it's a heavy enough spray that it's gonna hold your layers together but it's not a permanent spray with the 606 it's not sticky when you spray it on but when you iron it it's heat activated and it's going to act like a permanent patch more like a heat and bond type product would So typically most of us are used to some sort of a, a paper based, it's got the paper on one side and the glue on the other. And you use these products, Heat and Bond or um, Steam a Seam, some of those other ones. And typically when you're doing something like this where you need to trace lots of little parts and I need to trace them onto the paper side, I need to use a product like this so I can transfer, I can trace that design and then transfer it onto the fabric to make it an iron-on patch. But if I don't need to transfer a design, so if I have cute little fabrics like this that I can just cut little designs out of, okay, some cute little dog, something like that. So if I have a fabric that I can fussy cut a, a design out of, or if I just want to hand cut little shapes, the 606 product is going to work really great for applying those. So again, here I had, I cut this little flower out of this um, fabric. And so I'm going to grab, actually I'm going to take this out just so you can see. And this one, when it comes out, it kind of looks like a, a white powder. So I'm going to do it on the black heart just so you can see. Okay, 
okay so you can see how it's kind of white and it'll feel kind of cold and almost kind of wet but it's actually not wet it's just the accelerant to get the spray to come out that it feels kind of cold so I can pick it up and so now this is dry to the touch but it's going to be heat activated We got my pressing sheet. Again, so here's my heart. When I place my heart down, I do want to put some sort of a pressing sheet over it just to make sure I don't get anything on the back side of my iron. Put this on there. You do want to iron it just a little bit longer than you do your typical heat and bond. So now this is stuck onto there. If you flip it over and give it a press from the back, it'll actually bond it even a little bit harder. It does say it is a no-so fusible, although if I was putting it on something that is going to be laundered multiple times, I would probably want to stitch around the edges. Okay. So this is just going to give you a permanent bond without having to do the tracing and um, the heat and bond type product. Okay. Another way that we use this was on the quilt hanging behind me. So these were a bunch of Elaine's husband's, the, his t-shirts. And typically when you do a t-shirt quilt, you have to put something on the back of the t-shirt to stabilize the stretch so it doesn't stretch out of shape as you're working with it. This actually uh, works as your stabilizer. So Elaine went home, she cut out different parts and pieces of the t-shirts. The nice thing about it is you can do um, different shapes. Not everything has to be squares because you're really not piecing it together. So she was able, she could cut out a circle, she could cut out a curve, she could cut out long pieces, skinny pieces. And you're basically doing more of a collage type method. She then took her background, laid down all the different pieces that she had cut out, and she put a couple safety pins in them just to hold them in place. Then she set up her ironing board in her living room, popped in her favorite movie, <laughs> because this is the time-consuming part. She then took off one t-shirt at a time, had her spray box, sprayed the back of it, and then fused it. She fused the t-shirt onto the black cotton fabric. So that's holding the piece on and stabilizing the knit stretch. Okay. So once she had them all fused on, she, we just did a little zigzag, kind of a serpentine stitch around the edge of each piece. And then we did a quilting, just a large meander quilting to hold your back and batting together. So we are, we do have some, it's not really a pattern because every t-shirt quilt is a different t-shirt quilt. You have, you know, no two stacks of t-shirts are the same. But this is kind of a, more of a instructional information on how to do the process and the different things that she did. Okay. So those are three of the products that we have here in the store. This one is our most common one. This is our second most common but this is my new favorite. I've been putting it on all of my rulers at home because ruler slipping is one of your biggest issues in quilting. Then we have one last thing. So again, this one is going to be uh, posted as a free downloadable pattern or instruction sheet on the Daily Dose today. And then we decided to give you guys a little bit of a game to play this week. So I have found pictures of all of the different people who have worked here from we, since we opened through the current period. And there's even somebody on there who could be a future little quilter. And so this is going to be something you can print out. Your, your job is going to be to match up the name to each picture of past sewing basket employees. And then if you, once you have it filled out, if you... And, you have to have at least a minimum of two 
We're going to have a drawing, so you have to have a minimum of two correct answers to get your name into the drawing. And you can take a picture of it and either send it to our Facebook page or to our email. And then if anybody that we receive by Friday, those names will be put into a drawing and we'll do the drawing Friday on our Daily Dose for a winner of one or more door prizes, depending upon how many people we get entered. So it's just a fun little thing to do. Let's see how many of you can go way back 23 years ago to when we first started, if you know the original three owners. Email address? Um, our email address is quilt, Q-U-I-L-T, at sewingbasket.biz, B-I-Z. That is all for today. We hope you have a great evening, and we'll be back tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow.